Okay guys, today we have Diego with us and I want to share a quick story with you guys with um, Diego, you know, being obviously one of my more seasoned agents. He's been through a lot of hard times with me and I, I recall one instance in particular where I was very, very taken back by his loyalty and his personality. Um, as, as you guys recall, um, there was a, a time when I had a, a real estate company and I was kind of ousted from one day to the next. And I felt it coming and I gave him a call out of respect and I said, Diego, I just want to let you know that, you know, things are not working out for me and I'm going to have to, going to have to go. And, you know, just, um, giving you a call out of respect and I don't, you know, intend for you to follow me or, or come with me because I really don't even know where I'm going. And he's like, bro, you don't even have to say anything. Wherever you're going, I'm going. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. So that's the kind of person that Diego Escobar is. And um, I, I'm really excited that he's up here and speaking to us today because it's not easy for him to do this. It's really obviously uncomfortable for him to get in front of an audience, in front of a camera. But Diego has come out of his shell a lot in the, in the many years that I've known him. He, you know, he 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 did the uh, he did the the prospector series that came out awesome for someone who doesn't even you know like being in front of a camera. He was a natural. He also did an interview that we're going to be airing pretty soon, where it's his uh, mini bio. And if you ask me, I would think he was one of the best ones from that day. And you know, he was the most nervous. He was almost passing out before we even got in front of the camera. But you know, he's um, he's an amazing person, an outstanding father. And um, sometimes I feel like, you know, I could learn a lot from him because his priorities are, are always in order. You know, you might see me here working till 9 o'clock some nights, but he's not. He's, he leaves us here at a certain time because he wants to spend time with his family, spend time with his, with his uh, son. And uh, he has big dreams and big aspirations just like every one of you guys. So I want you to learn a little bit from Diego and the accomplishments is he, that he's come. And also I want him to also tell us about some of the low points that he's been in his life. That way you guys can relate to him. So... Uh, Diego, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Diego Escobar. Uh, I'm 37 years old. I was born in Colombia, 1979. Um, <clears throat> we came to the U.S. in uh, 1999. It was a tough situation at that time because we came with a visa. When we got to the airport, the person that uh, stamped the passport, he just gave us 30 days to be in the country, but our intention wasn't just uh, coming here for 30 days, we were going to stay because things weren't working out back in Colombia. So it was just me and my father, and then I got a brother, and I got a sister, and uh, my mom. So day three, they, they stayed in Colombia, me and my father, we came. Um, to kind of uh, set up, set, set things up for them. So we came, uh, I remember it was really, really cold. I think it was the January 2nd or 3rd, something like that, it was really cold. Uh, so we started working, we found a job working as a, a, a helpers for a truck driver doing deliveries. Uh, I never worked before my entire life. I was like, I think it was like 19 years old, 18, 19, something like that. Uh, so it was really difficult at first because we had a really good life back in Colombia. We were going to college. Uh, like I said, we didn't have to work before. Uh, so from one day to another, we started working. It was like, it was terrible. It was really hard. We, we used to deliver appliances. So they were very heavy. I wasn't used to that. Uh, but. We started seeing some money and you know things started to working out after i think it was two months my mom my brother my sister they they got here uh we rented a small apartment in elizabeth we always started working right away um then uh i think i found a job at a warehouse moving moving stuff i think it was like appliances or furniture stuff like that and uh at that point, I like after a couple of months after that, I started seeing these truck drivers. They were making good money. They were getting paid by by stop. It was like forty dollars per stop, and they used to make like twenty stops a day. So it was really good money. So I said, "Well, uh, I'm making about two hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars a week, and they're making like almost a thousand dollars a week. That's a, that's 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 good. So that's something that I was." looking uh, uh, to do. I mean, I didn't have any money saved. And like I said, at that time, things weren't as difficult as now for uh, um, illegal people. 
at that time you could get a, a driver's license showing your passport and stuff like that so I got a driver's license and uh, after I think it was like a year uh, I bought a truck my first truck I was like 20 something at that time I remember I put five thousand dollars down and they financed the rest so I started working as a truck driver I got a helper things were going good for like a, like a year so I said let me just buy another truck make some more money it was a little tough at that time because like Lou said when he got his barber shop now it's not only you but you have to uh, deal with some other people the driver the other helper they sometimes they wouldn't show up stuff like that so it was a little difficult uh, but I was managing so it was fine I was making more money it was good uh, so uh, me and my wife we at the time we were married she was my girlfriend we moved to uh, an apartment in Elizabeth that was uh, the summer of 2002 we moved to an apartment for like a week and uh, one night we went to uh, Blockbuster to get some movies because we recently moved so we didn't have any cable or anything so we went and we got some movies on our way back to the apartment uh, that's the last thing I remember I was on a light I was waiting for the light to turn green so I can make a left. That was in Elizabeth in the intersection of uh, Morris Ave and uh, North, North Avenue. Yeah. Uh, that's the last thing I remember being in the car. Then after that, uh, I woke up like, I would say like three weeks after that. And uh, I remember I was in a hospital and I was on a, I was in bed and uh, I couldn't move my right leg I had like a, like this rope and I had some like tubes and everything but uh, I was gonna shave when I opened the tray to look at the mirror to shave I had a uh, my lip was wide open and um, a whole bunch of scars so I didn't really know what happened at that time like I said I was sleeping for like three weeks they kept me sleeping for like three weeks so what happened is that I was at the light and then the car coming from the other direction, lost control, and it hit me. Um, I was in a, I think they said that I, that, I, that I died twice because I look at the reports after the whole incident. So I look at the reports from the hospital and they said that they had to give me, I don't know how they call it, the, 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 with the charts. They did in a, in a helicopter, they took me to Newark because they're really good with trauma over there in Newark. Even though the crash was in Elizabeth, I was in a really bad situation, so they took me to Newark. Uh, my wife she just had a little cut here and I think she broke this finger so they took her to Elizabeth in an ambulance so she was out the same night so she was it was she had some bruises and stuff but nothing serious um, so after that they told me what happened I had to go through a lot of surgeries uh, uh, they showed me pictures of when, when I was sleeping I had tubes on both of my lungs, uh, my throat, uh, a feeding tube, uh, it was really bad. So after that I started the re rehabilitation, I couldn't move my leg because I had broke my pelvis <clears throat> and I couldn't really put any weight on it, I, I, I felt it but I couldn't walk or anything. So I started with crutches uh, for like six months, then just one crutch, then, no, I'm sorry, first before the crutch I started in a, in a, a wheelchair. But um, after like a year, I was, I, was, I was doing better. So I couldn't do the trucking thing anymore because I couldn't lift any, anything heavy. Uh, then after that, I went to work in a warehouse. And um, then what happened? Uh, I worked in a warehouse for a couple of years. Um, then my brother started doing real estate and I really liked it because uh, I used to see these guys, they were driving these nice cars and <laughs> these nice clothes and uh, they had their own schedule and so he started doing real estate, I was like, oh man, I, I really wanted to do this, but then again, I didn't have um, um, my papers, I wasn't, I wasn't legal. Uh, so I just kept doing like, like uh, regular jobs. So then in uh, 2008, I got married to my beautiful wife. Uh, 
she became a citizen and then uh, I got my papers I think it was 2010 as soon as I got my papers I applied for the I started classes for the real estate I got my license right away and I started working uh, for the first so I've been licensed for it's been seven years 2010 yeah it's been seven years I would say from 2010 to 2014, I was doing all right. I was closing one deal here, one, one deal there, but I wasn't really making that much money. I was struggling, I was doing some other stuff just to be able to pay the bills. Uh, then uh, 2014, I always, I always seen, uh, I, I was always uh, seeing Lou, like before he was a broker or the owner, he was, uh, he was an agent, but he was always so busy. He was driving this nice, nice car, like, and I was like, oh man, I want to be like this guy one day. Uh, he always seemed busy, like doing a lot of stuff, buyers, sellers, like a lot of stuff. So I was like, oh man, this is, this is, this, this is what I want to do. So from 2010 to 2014, I was doing fine. But then one day I sat down with Lou, even though we didn't speak that much, like we were friends, but we like, he was always busy. Uh, so one day I was the beginning of the year, I was, I said, I, I gotta, I gotta ask him. I gotta, I, I want to see how, how, how he's, he's doing it. So one day I, I, I knock on his door, his office. I was like, dude, Lou, you have my five minutes. He was like, yeah, sure. Come in. So I was like, bro, look, this is what I need. I, I, I want you to tell me what is it that I need to do to be like, successful in this in this business i see that you do it like you're killing it uh so he was like okay perfect this is what we're gonna do we're gonna meet next week and we're gonna sit down for an hour i want to tell you exactly what you need to do and then uh you're gonna do it from that moment on 2014 he showed me how to prospect he showed me how to speak to people how to work like basically changed my life my career because ever since that since that like before i used to work with buyers because that was the easiest uh if you just go show them houses they like it okay you put an offer but sellers is a different thing sellers is is is, is, is difficult and i never approached sellers before that because i didn't think that that i, that I was good at it that i could do it but uh if you look at the top producers they all have listings that's what they go after listings and that's something that i wanted to do but i didn't know how so after i spoke with lou and he became my mentor that's i for some time i didn't even work with buyers anymore i, I was just concentrating on sellers so he showed me we started working together it was amazing like that year i think we we, we, we got like close to 100 listings it was it was amazing uh, then we had some problems and uh, we moved to another office, we kept working and uh, then from that office we came to this office and uh, now we're here. <laughs> at, one point, at one point you wanted to um, get into investing, you didn't know how, like how was it with your first deal that you were able to uh, acquire and how did you go about doing that? Uh, well, yeah, like, like I said, I was... I would see Lou like buying houses, fixing them, flipping them, and I was like, "Oh man, how do I do that?" That's like I want to do it, and I and I, I I I wanted to do it, but I didn't know how. I didn't know if I could. And sometimes I would I would I would call Louis and I was like, "Bro, look, can you can you come with me and see this house? Give me your opinion." I did it like. I don't know how many times and he always go with me he's like yeah this is a good deal you should buy you should do this you should do that but I never did it I never did it because I, I didn't know like I was afraid like repairs and and, and, and all that stuff so I, I never really did it then 2014 when, when I started working with him like like together like two months after we started working we started buying some houses it was amazing like he basically showed me everything everything how to uh, get the money what to look in a house if it's a good deal if it's not a good deal the the, the good things the bad things things you got to be careful with the houses so ever since then i mean he showed me how to do it it was amazing we did it we made some good money and how we doing how many houses do you own now right now um Hopefully, I'm closing another one on Wednesday, so that one's gonna be six houses. Wow. 
And uh, I know a long time ago you used to listen to Grant Cardone, who has like over thousands of units. Now, do you think now it's possible for you? Now that you've seen the, you know how e how easy it was to get your first four, five, six. I mean, I think now that 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 I that I done it like with the right guidance and with the knowledge and, and hard work, I think it's possible. Because he was like, he was in drugs. That's something that that I like about him. He was like. On his 20s, he was on drugs, he was doing drugs, he was, I think he was an alcoholic too. But one day he made the decision of, you know what, this is not what I want to be. I just want to, you know, be su successful. And he did it, and I think now he owes over 4,000 apartments, and that's, that's amazing. And the big thing that was holding you back, right, was just fear, right? It was fear, yeah, because I had the credit and I had some money, but it was... Fear. I was like, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if I lose all the money? What if the house doesn't sell? It, it was, it was fear. But like, once we did it together, and you show me how to do it, like, <laughs> not a lot easier. But it's it's just that with with him, it's like, I think all the agents here we feel the same way that. Um, or at least myself, I feel like when I'm doing something with him, I know that it's gonna happen. I don't know why, it's the, it's the way that he, um, uh, how you say that? Uh, yeah, exactly, it's like, it's like when you're a little kid and you, you and your father. You know that nothing's gonna happen because your father's gonna be there to take care of you, something like that, right? So, so no, it's something like that, no. I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> No, I'm being honest. Yeah, you feel secure because sometimes we have really, really bad situations with some of these houses, some of the, these deals, some some clients. But if you if you know Lou, every time you say something to him, this this like sometimes I'm sweating. I don't know what to do. Like I can't sleep, and I can't wait to just call him the next day or to to be here at the office to tell him, bro, this is happening. And like I said, I, I couldn't sleep, I'm sweating, I can take that thing out of my mind, that problem. And then I tell him, and he's like, oh, okay, no problem. We get it done, we fix it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But that's something that, I mean, and I know that a lot of agents feel the same way. Lim, for example, she's, she's the same, just the same way. And, and, and that's, that's amazing that you could trust and that, that that person can give you that type of um, support and, and, and yeah. <laughs> Diego's buying a house this week for his family. He got probably at least one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in equity in the house he's buying just from prospecting. I don't know how many of you guys have been hesitating on doing the prospecting, but Diego can attest to how it works. It, it, it really does. I mean, at the beginning it was difficult because cold calling is not is not easy. Like eighty percent of the people you get on the phone, they're doing something else, or they're upset, or they they don't know you, and to get them to talk to you and try to set up an appointment with someone that you don't know is is tough. But um, once you start doing it, sometimes I get people that curse at me, hang, 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 yeah, hang, hang, hang the phone. But you know what? That's a phone call closer to the one that is gonna say yes. And once you get that one. It's a home run. It's it's that one is just gonna. I have uh, I have list of, of, of people that I gotta call. I got like three four hundred people. I know that that list I'm gonna get at least five six. So for me that's worth it. And that list is gonna take me between everything that I have to do. It's gonna take me about two weeks to call. But I know that I'm gonna get at least five six six listings on, of of that list. So for me it's it's worth it. And he showed me how to do it. Nobody was doing that like before. We started prospecting like that. I was door knocking. I mean, it was good. I got some business out of it, but it was more time that you spend like driving. I could do like maybe 10 houses a day. Meanwhile, you're on the phone, you can call 100 people and 200 people. So it's, that's the other thing. He's always been creative. Like at that office, nobody was doing that. Everybody was doing the door knocking and maybe mail, mail outs and stuff like that. He came out with that, with that idea. And that's all the thing, he shared it with everybody. He's not like, oh, I found this and, and this is working. I'm just gonna keep it for me and make all the money. He's, he's not like that. Like you guys see here, like every time he finds something, finds something new, something that is working, he's like, okay, let's do this. Let's try it, it's working, I've been doing it. So that's another thing that, and in this business, it's really, really rare to find someone like that. I had different brokers before, 
and they want all the all, all their the, the money for them for themselves. I I, ha, I even have brokers that, that were like, you know what, flipping houses is not working anymore. You know what? You just gotta get clients, get deals. But you know why? Because that's gonna help him. That's gonna make him money. Sometimes Lou is not making money some out of some uh, out of some of these deals, but he's helping. And he doesn't matter. He's like actually helping the the people, not 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 only himself. So that's amazing. Thank you, Ron. <clears throat> with um with Diego, it's um. He, he he's a pleasure to work with and mentor because he actually listens and does what you say, what, what you say. You know, I don't mind meeting with agents on a daily basis, weekly basis, however many times you want to meet, but actually do the work and do the legwork. And Diego was one that would be there every morning, nine o'clock. We would get started on our prospecting, and we would there would be days when we have multiple listing appointments and we, and we start calculating well diego man if we keep doing this every single day we're going to get five listings a week that's 20 listings a month that's 240 listings a year and I'm like bro it's this is nuts and you know like how are we going to handle the volume and it really is that easy guys it's just a, it's a matter of it's a context for like they say in real estate it's, it's really what it is and diego is a testament because diego's english is not the best and he would get nervous when someone that wasn't spanish would answer the phone and uh, he quickly got over that and he and the day i was most proudest of him was the day he had his first american client come into the office and like, sign a listing agreement with him and uh, it's a, that was a big big changing point in his in his life so it's, it goes to show you that you can't put any any reason in front of you for not being able to do something there is no barrier besides yourself and Diego is awesome man you, you've done well man your career is just starting I know you have a bright future ahead of you and everyone else in this office who's just starting too you can see from Diego that it's not easy and it hasn't been easy but it's really you that's going to hold yourself back if you don't try hard enough that's uh, amazing that he can always put his family before his own interests most people get up there and say you know I want to have you know 100 rental units or I want to you know be a multi-millionaire real estate investor but he puts his family and their interest first before anything else so that shows you what kind of uh, person he is all right any more questions guys good thank you there you go thank you so much brother you're awesome bro